video you're about to see is me working with a golden retriever puppy. He's about almost 10 months old. Up until nine months old, he was lived a very, very unstructured life, very rambunctious, um, overexcited, overstimulated, constantly, no rules, no boundaries, uh, no real exercise. Just, I mean, he would run around in the backyard, you know, and play with other dogs. That was his exercise, but no, no structure to anything, no purpose to anything. He was very destructive. Uh, plants, potted plants, screen doors, you name it, very destructive. So. Charlie came to me and this is a video uh, we're working on keeping him in pack drive. So this is an exercise that you can do with your dog uh, by yourself. Get yourself a long line, get yourself a place cot. You're gonna see me using two place cots. Um, and so what I'm doing is I'm gonna be working him on recall and having him practice place. Place is, is kind of an idle state for pack drive. It's not magic. I don't look at place as a command. I'm not commanding. Place is a, is a gift to a dog. Let me teach you how to just be here on this spot and turn off and relax and just wait till further instruction or just take a nap. So take a look at the video. You can do this with one place cot. You can do this with two place cots, uh, but it helps your dog practice staying in pack drive. Rather. A lot of behaviors that we don't like, a lot of them start with a dog that's in prey drive. Charlie, come. Good boy. Good boy. Place. Charlie, come. Good boy. Good boy. Place. Place. Charlie, come. Good boy. Good boy. Place. Charlie, come. Good boy. Good boy. Place. Charlie, come. Good boy. Good boy. Place. So I'm using the e-collar maybe 50% of the time at this point with Charlie. And you can see it's a, a 10. So basically I'm calling him first. If I don't get a response from just a verbal request, then I'll bump the e-collar once. I'll just give it a tap at, at 10. Charlie, come. Good boy, good boy, good boy. Place. Place. So I did not, I did not bump the e-collar there even though he kind of got a little bit confused. Just ask him to my rule is one, two, follow through. Charlie knows this stuff, but you know, we haven't done it here at the park at this time of day with whatever distractions we got going on. So I'm gonna ask him twice. Then if he still was distracted, um, 
then I'll bump the e-collar, I'll tap it once because that's how he's been conditioned to it. That's how I've taught him the collar. Um, I want to fade away from it. So my verbal request is, is what I want to use and I can reinforce it with the e-collar as a reminder of, oh yeah, you did, you asked me to do that. Here we go. Charlie, come, come on, bud. Good boy, good boy. Place. Good. So he's really good going to this place board. And this one, he gets a little distracted. So we're gonna work, keep working on that. Charlie, come, come on. Come on, bud. Good boy. Good boy. Place. Good. Much better. Much better. All right. This is a good distraction. So we got a little dirt bike over here. So I'm just going to keep working him. Try to come. Come on. Come on, bud. Let's go. Good boy. Place. So he's really distracted looking over that way, so we'll see when we get here. Charlie, let's go. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Place. So I still haven't used the e-collar yet since I started videoing. Charlie, let's go. Come on, bud. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Place. Place. So see, he goes into prey drive right there. And I'm asking him to be in pack drive. So on the way over, he shifts into prey drive, starts smelling the ground. I asked him twice. He went and switched to pack drive, got on place, did not tap the button on the remote. Charlie, let's go. Come on. Good boy. That's a good boy. Place. Place. Now I'm on the button. Place. And I'm off the button. Charlie, place. Place. So there, tapped him at 10. Still was distracted, he laid down. So then I pressed the red button, which I have set at 10 points higher than 10, which would be 20. So then I tapped him at 20 and that got him on there. So I have one, two, follow through. I asked him twice, follow through using the remote when he didn't respond. And I can follow through with the red button when he doesn't respond to level 10, I can follow through with a, with a 20. The pattern that, it, that we set here is what's, what happened first? Verbal request, then verbal request, then stimulation, then higher stimulation. It's based on his level of distraction. Whatever he was smelling there was significant enough to not be able to listen and respond to my verbal request. So there we go. Charlie, let's go. Come on, bud. Good boy. Good boy. Place. That's a good boy. So we'll see how he does here. Charlie, let's go. Come on, bud. Come on, let's go. Good boy. Place. Good. Much better. Nice. Nice and sharp. So I still got him on a, about a 25 foot line. He's not quite off leash ready yet. Close, very close. Charlie, let's go. Good boy, good boy. Place. Good boy. 
So as you can see, I'm just holding the end of that, that line. Charlie, let's go. Come on. Good boy. That's a good boy. Place. Place. Wrong place. Charlie, let's go. Place. Good. Better. So as he started to move away, held the black button until he turned and started coming back this way. Held the black button, recalled him back to that place. So black button again is set at 10. So that's situation why he's not quite 100% off leash reliable because he just still once in a while checks out, gets confused, his nose carries him, prey drive. So until we're flawless, then I'm not going to cut the leash loose. Charlie, let's go. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Place. Good boy. So check it out, you guys. I do this with clients all the time and I have, have them do this with their dogs, whether they're recalling to themselves and then sending him back to a place board so if they don't have two or going place board to place board like this. Um, this is working a dog primarily in pack drive in a park with sights and sounds and smells and birds and lots of lots of things to be in prey drive. So this is very, very mentally exhausting for your dog. Dogs get mentally exhausted far before they get physically exhausted. So if you think you're just going to take your dog to the park, play fetch with them and it's going to tire them out, throw the ball, you know, a dozen or two dozen times. Okay. That's going to tire them out. Nope. Not unless there is a mental component to it. Yeah. They're going to have some physical, physical tire tired, but not near what this exercise is going to do and we're only moving 25 feet and then he's resting at 25 feet this is pack drive i'm asking charlie to be in pack drive and stay in pack drive charlie let's go come on good boy good boy place good boy there you go so this is working your dog playing fetch how most people play fetch where it's just, it's just repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. We're not switching the dog into, into a different drive at all. They're staying in prey drive, staying in prey drive, staying in prey drive. That is not really working your dog. It's not hard for them to just keep chasing the ball, bring it back, keep chasing the ball, keep bringing it back. What's hard for them? They bring the ball back, place. They bring the ball back, have them lay down. They bring the ball back, have them sit, move away from them call them to you, then have them sit again, then throw the ball. Incorporate some type of, some type of work into it, some type of mental, some type of switching him into pack drive. Instead of this repetitive, neurotic, prey-driven activity, but we think, oh, he's having so much fun. Yeah, well, it's not doing what you want it to do. Believe me, if you play fetch where you're not asking something of that dog other than to give you the ball, you are missing the opportunity. And it is not not helping you with having a well-behaved dog. I promise that. Charlie, let's go. Come on, let's go. Good boy. Good boy. Place. So again, if you're playing fetch with this repetitive, no pauses, no breaks, not switching pack into pack drive, not having the dog do something, not having them downshift at any point in that game, however long you play it with them, you are doing yourself a disservice with your dog that you probably are struggling with in some form or fashion to listen to you, to be calmer, all of these things. Maybe they're reactive when you walk them. Maybe they're reactive in the house. Maybe they're just nervous. But if you're, you're just playing this repetitive game, you're actually potentially making things worse. Little by little, you're definitely missing an opportunity, a huge opportunity to make things better. 
by keeping them in pack drive, switching them from prey drive to pack, pack drive, practicing, teaching them that how to switch. And when you ask them to switch, they do it. Charlie, let's go. Come on. Good boy. Good boy. Let's go. Let's go. Place. Nice. Good job, bud. Good job. So now I'm going to drop this leash. Just let him drag it. Might extend these place cots a little bit. Not much. Six feet or so. shade for him though. Keep it right there. There we go. Good. Charlie, let's go. Come on. Good boy. That's a good boy. Good boy. Place. Good boy, bud. Good job. Place. See, the other thing I'm doing, you guys, if you're watching it and you're staying this far into it, I'm not constantly talking to Charlie or at him. Most of you talk at your dogs. I'm not constantly talking to him. Charlie, let's go. Good boy, rewarding it. Giving him instruction to go to place. That's it. I'm not, not saying his name constantly. I'm not saying place constantly. I'm not constantly saying things to him. Stop doing that. If you're saying, if you're here on a walk and you're stopping and you're saying, halt, sit, down wait shh come stay like what jesus you're confusing your dog if you're walking stop have him sit sit good you don't need to tell him good you don't need to tell him shh i, I just rinse and repeat if they get up sit use the leash to give them a little pressure guide them I don't even incorporate, I don't even teach the word stay or wait. If I ask a dog to sit or ask Charlie to be on place, I mean, stay there. If I move away, stay there unless I said, let's go, or I give you further instruction. That's it. I don't need to tell you to stay. I don't need to put another word on top of a word that you just did. Sit and say, down, stay. It's implied. You guys, it's implied. Stop using so many words. Keep it simple for your dog. They're confused. You're confusing them. Mostly because you're confused. But how can you be less confused? Shrink your vocabulary you use with your dog and utilize less words. Stop repeating the same words. If you're only using six different words with your dogs, which is really about all I use, don't repeat them all the time. One, two, follow through. Say it. Mean it when you say it and have a way to follow through and help them out and guide them. Such as a long line, such as a leash, remote collar, whatever you're gonna do. Show them, physically show them, you may need to. Charlie, let's go, come on bud, a good boy. That's a good boy, come on, come on, good boy. Good boy, place. Nice, good job, good job bud. So Charlie's one where if you give him physical affection and verbal praise he tends to get a little bit overexcited so it's verbal if i give him a, a little bit of physical affection it, it's going to be a little bit less verbal um, and my tone's going to change so also pay attention to the tone that you're using with your words if you're saying sit does that sound like a question or sit 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 we have that little up up swing, up tone, sit, sit. What sounds more confident? Sit or sit. Place, place or place. Listen to me. Charlie, let's go. Come on, bud. Good boy. That's a good boy. Place. See, confidence. I didn't say place, like I'm asking if he wants to do it. Like I'm asking if he understands it. Place, sit. Also, when you use your dog's name, don't use it to scold them. Don't use it for the negative. You're gonna say your dog's name, make it positive so that they, when they hear their name, they associate it with good things, such as recall, 
so that you can recall them. If you're used to using your dog's name, bad Charlie, bad Jack, bad Boo Boo, Boo Boo, that was naughty. Uh, when, when you need them to come to you and you call their name and you're wondering why they don't, it's because they have an association that you use their name in a negative tone with bad energy behind it. Charlie, let's go. Come on. Good boy. Let's go. Let's go. Come on, Charlie. He's got a stick. He's bringing a stick. Good place. Out. Good boy. Thank you. So, see, I just said out. I didn't say out. Charlie, leave it. Leave it. Just out. Period. Make a statement, not a question, when you're asking your dog to do something or making a request or giving them a command or whatever, however you want to say it. I'm not saying place, good, break, let's go, good, shh. I don't need all that crap. Keep it simple for these dogs, people. This, this is not rocket science. Charlie, let's go. Come on, bud. Good boy. Good boy. That's a good boy. Place. See? Just place, not stay. Place. Okay, good boy. Halt. Wait. No. Shh. I don't need to. Shh. I don't even make white noise for the dog. Like a white noise machine. Machine. Some of these people be doing. Shh. What the hell is that? If you're going to get use a noise, know why you're doing it. Know why. Know why Caesar does his shh that he's famous for. Shh. It's to switch the dog's state of mind. It's a quick, shh, audible touch, if you will, to shift the dog's state of mind, get their attention. Shh. Oh shoot! It's no different than a little little quick tug on a leash. No different than a little tap with the electronic collar. No, no different than saying, "Hey." Oh, shoot, you got my attention. Yes. Shh. All right. Charlie, let's go. Come on, bud. Let's go. Good boy. That's a good boy. Come on. Good boy. Place. Nice job, bud. Nice job. So this is a little 20-minute session with Charlie. 95% of it has been spent in pack drive. Where he needs to live this is where your dogs you want them to live but you got to practice getting them into pack drive you want off-leash dogs you want your dog to listen to you when you're out in, in public you got to practice pack drive if your dog's pulling they're probably in prey drive they want to go forward and smell things and they're used to you allowing that and so the pulling just keeps on happening we go their way. Charlie, let's go. Come on, bud. Good boy. Good boy. Come on. Place. Boy, I know. He stepped on the leash that time, so he gave himself a little pressure. Good job, bud. Way to work through it. So I'm going to call it good with our session here with Charlie. Charlie is a, uh, he's going on 10 months now. 10 months old golden retriever. He's a little bit wild and unruly when I first started working with him. Well, a lot a bit wild and unruly actually. He spent uh, months four through nine pretty much without a whole lot of rules, regulations, expectations. He was just, hey, you do what you want. He's got a be in the yard, run around, tearing things up, tearing, eating plants, eating planters, tearing up screens, all oh, sorts of things for five months of his very early life. No rules, no boundaries, no expectations, no, no active teaching. He learned a lot. It wasn't anything that his parents, who are a little bit older couple, uh, the husband has Parkinson's what Charlie learned in those five months wasn't anything that's going to benefit them and so hence why he is here with me and we're working but he's come along beautifully 
He loves he loves the work. He's, he does like to party. He likes to have fun, but he, he loves the work. He has soaked up everything. He's, he's a little strong-willed. That is for sure. He can be very demanding and controlling with affection and excitement, and that leads to rule-breaking for him, jumping and climbing up on people. So we, uh, we've been working heavily with that, meet with his parents, and we go out to their house once a week to just proof things, see how he's doing with what he's learning with me, and see how he is, how that's taking hold at his home environment. So there you go, that's Charlie. This is our little session of recall and place being in pack drive at the park, hanging out in the shade. It's not too hot in the shade, it's actually pretty nice. really proud of him. He's done a good job. Look at that. That's a calm dog. Can your guys' dog just lay on their place caught at the park like that and just watch the world go by? Or are they just constantly fidgety trying to get up and chase things or come after you? Or can they even do that at home? If your dog can't just chill at home and turn off, I feel sorry for them. That's a lot of stress they're living with and anxiety all the time. Think about how you'd be if you never know how to turn off. Look at that. 